This video is going to be focused on techniques to be used when fly fishing from a boat in Puget Sound for sea run cutthroat and coho salmon. There are quite a few differences in techniques used when fishing out of a boat versus when fishing from a beach, and I'd like to help highlight some of these techniques here in this video. One of the most obvious differences between fishing out of a boat and fishing from the beach is when you're casting. When you have other people in the boat, as you will likely do, your casting room is severely limited and you need to alter your technique some in order to prevent hooking people, hooking the boat, causing tangles, and having all kinds of issues. The ability to cast backhanded is extremely useful when fishing out of a boat. As you can see Matt demonstrating, when he casts backhanded from his position in the stern, it keeps the line out off the back of the boat and away from the guy running the boat. A couple other techniques that can help when fly casting from a boat is water loading as well as keeping your cast extremely high. By performing what would almost be known as a steeple cast, you can keep your fly line well above anybody else in the boat and prevent putting a hook in their ear. Water loading is where on your back cast, you let your line actually come down and touch the water. You don't want to let it sit there for very long, especially if you're using a sinking line. But the drag created from the water on the line will load the rod on your forward cast and you can shoot directly line out. This is very advantageous because it just minimizes your false casts. It's really important to minimize your false casting when fishing from a boat. The more that you false cast, the higher the chances are that you're going to put a hook in somebody, tangle somewhere on the boat, or just generally have other issues. Minimizing false casting will also keep your fly in the water longer. And that's crucial for Puget Sound fly fishing in general. In the water, the higher the chances that you're going to encounter fish. It's really just that simple. When you're fishing from a boat, you're elevated up over the water much more so than when you're fishing from the beach. With this in mind, it's important that you keep slack out of your line. One of the best ways to keep slack out is to keep your rod tip low, pointed straight down at the water. Even sticking the rod down into the water a few inches will greatly help reduce slack line. If you're standing with your rod tip at your waist and it puts it four feet above the water, then with every strip you're going to get slack line and that can result in a lot of mistakes when the fish are taking the fly very subtly as they often do. The other benefit of keeping your rod tip low is that it helps out when it comes to strip setting. When fishing the salt water, strip setting is crucial. When a fish eats your fly, it's important to keep your rod tip down. You don't want to lift the rod like you would if you were fishing trout. We call this a trout set when you get a take and you immediately lift up the rod. It takes a great amount of discipline to keep that rod tip down and only use your strip to set the hook and only lift the rod once you've connected to the fish. I've been doing this for years, but I still trout set now and then and it's frustrating, but it's just a natural reaction to most people. It can be a particularly hard to do when the fish are missing the fly multiple times. Oftentimes, especially when resident coho are thick, you'll get a take and miss him and miss him and miss him. And sometimes it's the third, fourth or fifth attempt before you actually manage to connect. Having the discipline to keep the rod tip down and focus on your strip sets can really pay off here. Line management is also extremely important when fly fishing from a boat. There's just so many things that can tangle a fly line, even if you've gone through your boat and removed things that are possibly snag worthy. One of the best tools you can use for the line management purposes is some sort of a stripping bucket or basket. Wearing a stripping basket as you would on the beach is effective while fishing out of a boat. However, an actual stripping bucket of some kind that would sit on the deck of your boat would make things a lot easier. The particular setup that we were using this day was bought at Home Depot and they're collapsible, almost like a laundry hamper, but more industrial. It's a good idea to cut a piece of plywood 
the sides of the, the bottom of the bucket to help firm it up so your fly line lands on a firm surface instead of the mesh bottom. The advantage of a large diameter bucket such as these is that your line goes right in with big coils. It doesn't tightly lie together, which can knot up and cause running line tangles. Another huge advantage of having a stripping bucket is that you can travel with your rod ready to fish. By having the line already stripped off and in the basket, and the rod resting in the basket while cruising around looking for fish, it is readily available to grab and fire off a cast if you spot a jumper right off the boat. Oftentimes, with this sort of run and gun style fishing, when you spot a fish, you have a matter of seconds to get a cast off and get a fly in front of it. So having the rod rigged, ready, line stripped off is a huge advantage. Shooting head lines are also a big part of helping to reduce your false casting. Shooting heads by design are intended for just a one or two false casts and then to shoot the line forward. This greatly improves the amount of time that your fly spends in the water and reduces the amount of time that you spend fly casting. Fly fishing from a boat is no time to work on your Brad Pitt impersonation. Shadow casting simply won't do. You need to keep false casts to a minimum for a multitude of reasons. It's safer and you'll simply catch more fish. One of the biggest keys of any saltwater fly fishing from a boat is to keep your eyes open at all times and constantly be observing what's around you. You don't want to get too focused on what's in front of you. You need to keep an eye all around, looking for jumpers, splashes, sippers, fins breaking the water, current setting up, rip tides, birds that are feeding on bait fish, Birds that are diving under the water and coming up with bait fish, porpoises, whales, all these things can help clue you in on where the fish are. By keeping aware of your surroundings, you will often notice things that can produce great fishing that you might not have noticed if you were simply focused on what you were doing. The ability to multitask and cast and fish while also scanning in all directions is extremely useful when fly fishing out of a boat in Puget Sound. The general technique that we employ when fly fishing from a boat for cutthroat is to get within casting range of the beach and try to keep the boat there and work our way down the beach. On this particular day, we were staying 60 to 80 feet off the beach and making casts in to where our fly would land within six inches of shore or sometimes even landing on shore and we would pop it into the water. You would be absolutely amazed at how shallow of water you can catch cutthroat in. Oftentimes when fishing out of a boat, you're gonna to need to fish heavier sinking lines than you would on the beach. The reason for this is that when you're in a boat, the current is moving and it's pushing the boat. So when you cast out with say an intermediate line, like I would usually fish on the beach, Within seconds, it's being almost drugged behind the boat, and it's simply not getting the fly down. On this particular day, we had to switch to type 6 shooting heads in order to stay down with the amount of current that we had. shooting headlines. I'm fishing a little mylar uh, epoxy uh, popsicle stick. Matt was getting them on a squimp. Not easy fishing. We had to kind of find them and get a good cast on them, but we hooked a few. So now we're moving on. Boat control also plays a crucial element in this style of fishing. Being able to keep the boat within casting range of the beach as you drift along is a nice skill to have. Along the same lines, when you find pods of fish, as we did on this particular day, you need to be able to control the boat to get close enough to them, but not spook them away. One of the main advantages of fishing out of a boat is that you're extremely mobile. You can fish all of the shoreline of Puget Sound. Because you're so mobile, 
There's really no need to spend too much time and effort fishing one particular area that just isn't producing. When fishing likely looking points, beaches, etc., really a dozen or so casts is all you need to determine if there's fish around. If you don't see any fish, if you don't hook any fish, if you don't see any signs of anything going on, it's often better to just pick up and move on down to the next beach and so on and so forth until you find the fish. The one last thing that I'm going to mention is tides. Here's a shot of the tide chart for the day that we fished. You can see that there was a high tide at approximately 8 a.m. of just over 13 feet and an outgoing tide that dropped down to a negative 0.79 feet. Ultimately, when it comes to any saltwater fly fishing here in Puget Sound, tides dictate just about everything. In a nutshell, when you're fishing for salmon and sea run cutthroat, you really need moving water. And tides create that moving water. Simplified, the larger the tidal exchange, the more moving water there's going to be. So you can see how on a day like this, with a large outgoing tide, followed by a really nice incoming tide, the chances are we were going to be able to find moving water all day. And this is exactly the kind of thing that I'm looking for when I'm heading out to go saltwater fly fishing in Puget Sound. Overall, there's a lot of great advantages to fly fishing Puget Sound from a boat. It's a lot of fun. You can catch a lot of fish and see some amazing sights. Hopefully this video will give you a few ideas of ways that you could improve your fly fishing out of a boat. By following some of these techniques, you can help narrow down the learning curve and really improve your saltwater fly fishing game while fishing from a boat.